Hi everyone, I hope you had a wonderful morning just like me. Today we'll be using a tangent ripple to shade a, not a camera, not a video switcher, but a processing device called Colorbox. And Colorbox is this amazing little box from AJA that will allow you to shade any incoming SDI feed like if it was a camera. And it has a lot of wonderful pipelines like AJA, Color, Colorfront, Orion Convert, BBC and NBC lots, including in this case, a color corrector, which is the focus of our attention in this video. So uh, other videos will cover the rest of the color box. We are um, demonstrating those pipelines, but in this video, I'll show you how you can use a USB device like Tangent Ribble to have a cinematic color grading experience with your color box. That's what this video is about. Okay, so um, the idea of that is to offer from Skyhoy not only broadcast workflows where you would typically use an RCP panel, like with a joystick that would shade a lens, which by the way, doesn't exist on the color box, or have a cinematic workflow, which is more like the trackballs that you know from DaVinci Resolve, or post-processing, color grading in post and so on. So we are now applying that to live imagery. So let's go uh, to uh, the demonstration straight away. We have implemented this feature for the BBC RGB color corrector and the NBC U RGB color corrector in the color box. And then we'll see where it goes from there. But essentially it is like, you know, from DaVinci Resolve or Blackmagic's ATEM switches where you have lift, gamma, gain, you have black levels, you have gamma that is like the mid-tones, is it? And gain, which is highlight. So did I swap them around? Anyway, dear friends, let's look at how this works. First, traditionally on the color fly, you have a little menu here where you have gamma gain and black already broken out. And on these encoder knobs, you see that I'm able to actually change these values and do so for all these parameters. You see it's happening in the web UI already. Over here, these values are changing around as I am adjusting gamma gain and the, um, yeah, for blue, uh, red, green and blue, gamma gain and black. All right, but I can also use the tangent ripple to do the same. All right, so as I'm now rolling this trackball, you see that values for the black levels are changing. And actually, uh, yeah, and now I'm doing the same basically for the gamma levels, and then I'm doing it also here for the gain levels. You see that in the web UI, it's a little bit difficult to see in the picture on the screen, but okay, let's try. I already kind of like this, but maybe in the black tones, I want to have, um, okay, more like a reddish feel. Let's see if I can, okay. Ah, we are hitting something right there. I like that. Okay, what's happening? Ooh, that was some punch to this one. Okay, I'm just keeping it there. Now, what is the encoder doing? Because the trackballs are obviously adjusting red, green, and blue. Actually, the encoders kind of does the same, but we call this offset. And that's like the common level for all of them. And that means if it, I, we, I can show you that for black. If I turn it like this, you see that the, the black level is dimmed down here on, on the black side for all parameters. And of course I can do similar things on here are the midtones and then let's play a little bit with the gain here. Okay. All right, I think this looks pretty cool. I like this image. All right, so that, that's how you use the tangent ripple. If you had multiple color boxes, you would just have this as a camera selector. You could go between them and pick another camera and then you could use the trackballs to adjust that as well. And that's basically what I have to share with you in this video, except I also want to highlight a few other things that if you watch the videos about Blackmagic design camera shading using the same methodology, um, we have some reset buttons here. And if I press the uh, button to the right of the uh, black section, you see that I'm essentially um, and nulling the, the, the black values here. That would correspond to pressing the little reset button in the UI right there, all right? Uh, if I press the button next to, I'm actually off, I, I'm resetting the offset, which is like the common level that they are sharing. So for instance, if I'm changing, and now it, this is like having a master black. And by the way, that's like a super cool con consequence of this concept. That is, uh, as a part of it, having the red, green, and blue dimension split out into an angle and a distance from the center means that the offset level, which is like the three-dimensional depth in this color space, is manipulated by this encoder. And that essentially gives you like a master, even though we have only red, green, and blue in this case. So, um, and that, that's what you see right now. These values are synchronously adjusted. Even if I go, you know, uh, to, to other values on, on the ball, 
if I reset those values, it is... Ah, that is not true. Ah, okay. Sorry, guys. If you press that on this side, you are resetting everything. The RGB values goes back to zero or they go back to one or whatever. But if you press this one on the side and in case that it had been... So I can show you the opposite like this. Let's say I want to remove the, uh, the level here on um, like reset the offset the common change for red green and blue on on the um black levels then if i'm pressing this it is it is going back to like pure rgb values if you will it's a little bit difficult to see in between but anyway just notice that with these buttons i am able to kind of reset it all out which would now correspond to pressing that reset button before we end this video let's take a quick look at how this is all set up because the tangent ripple is connected to something right yes it is connected to my color fly so if you have a blue de pill device um we call it blue pill that's like a platform name for more or less all our products nowadays they usually have in this enclosure form factor a USB-A port and you can plug your tangent ribbon right into that one. We also have a user contributed 3D printed pedestal here which uh, you can use to mount the tangent ribbon because it's actually um, w with that pedestal you can place it behind the collar fly and that makes a whole lot of sense. But the moment you have added the tangent ribbon to the collar fly, um, if we look at the UI of the collar fly, this is how it's set up. So essentially, uh, if I just did this over again, um, Let's quickly do that. So, color box. Just make a new project here. See, all of this doesn't require you. Ah, ah, okay. Activate, thank you. Ah, I had another project by that name. Okay, so blah. And add, save, yes. Okay, now we have a fresh project. And what happens in a fresh project is that it will basically go colorfly solo. Now, in this case, I want to add a panel. I want to basically add the tangent ribble, but the first thing I should do is to basically pick the configuration that is designed to include the tangent ribble into the configuration application of parameter control. And that will bring up a dialog like this one where it says, I'm missing a panel. And then we just go about discovering panels on the network. We find the tangent ribble, we apply it over here. We'll search up for color box and find it, select it. We'll set the IP address of the color box and We'll see it's connected immediately after doing so. Then we add it as a camera. You see, I am not speeding up this video. This is how easy and quick it is to actually get control of devices using Skyhoist equipment. So um, finally, how did the Tangent Ribble pop up as an IP device? Because you might notice that it actually has an IP address all of a sudden. See, this IP address is the IP address of the Colorfly. And the port number is the one that we have designed for it in the package called XPanel Hits. That is this package. So packages are like small applications running on your Colorfly. It has a powerful Linux inside. And um, we have uh, the ADA Colorbox device core. We have hardware manager that talks to the buttons and faders on the Colorfly itself. We have reactor, which is orchestrating all the device control from the uh, device core here and then we have system manager and device core connector which uh, system manager is essentially this UI. XPanel hits is the one that connects to your color box. You see this is the starting port you can um, kind of add multiple of these and you see already here that I have some log output um, and I got a little bit more as I move these around. Now if I unplug it from the backside of the color box you'll see information that tangent ribble was disconnected. Okay so now I'm just plugging it in once again and you'll notice that it is now being connected once again. Let's go to the wiki page and search for Colorbox. No, wait. Hits. Just search hits. Or you could probably also search Ripple. Because then it will still bring you to this page. And on the this page, it is um, mentioned how that the tangent ripple is supported, how you can also manipulate a little bit the settings for the, the precision of the encoders. And finally, there is the downloadable um, mount, uh, thanks to our user that helps uh, helped us uh, make this all work. Now, um, you basically need to get the XPanel Hits application running to add the Tangent Ripple in this way. And then, um, ah, yeah, 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 you need another tiny detail. You also need to make sure USB-A is enabled on your Blue Pill device. All right. Thanks for following in this video. I hope it was informative, useful for you. Please follow along on our YouTube channel. We have many more videos coming out about broadcast technology and how Skyhoy products will help you enhance your production quality.